Hey everybody, I want to do a video talking about some of the hazards and cautions and things that you need to consider when you're charging your house battery in a van. I'm not an expert as I've always said, that's my disclaimer, so take this info for what it's worth and if you're concerned about those things, do your research so that you're aware of of what the potential hazards are now as you guys most know if you've been following my channel I use flooded lead acid batteries which basically means that they're filled with liquid acid or electrolyte and you have to maintain the batteries they are not AGM batteries now if you're using AGM batteries or considering that or you don't have a battery yet and you're gonna try to figure out which one to get and you're gonna keep that battery inside your van going with a AGM is the safest route to go and you won't have to really have any of these considerations or restrictions that I'm gonna be having because I'm using a flooded lead acid battery so let me first talk a little bit about the uh, about the wire that I'm running from my cigarette lighter outlet or accessory outlet to my battery in order to charge it while I'm driving the cigarette outlet outlet um, and I learned this from some comments that I received on some of my videos people that are smarter than I am which is the beauty of YouTube right that that outlet to my understanding is not regulated meaning it's just gonna feed whatever voltage is coming off your uh, electrical system in your vehicle so it could fluctuate everywhere from I've heard as low as six volts when you're when you're starting the vehicle and you're pulling power out of that battery to start it could drop that voltage down to six volts and then when the starter is shut off it's going to kick back up and then the alternator is going to provide power and that's generally 14 volts so it can have a huge fluctuation in power coming through that outlet depending on the circumstances another thing to consider is um, like when you turn on your headlights or you turn on a, a accessory there's going to be a fluctuation of voltage until the alternator kind of equalizes that out now I've been told that some newer vehicles or maybe all of them I don't know uh, have much smarter alternator systems than older vehicles so they may be better about controlling that fluctuation and or regulating power that goes to your battery which is a whole different subject if you take a hot wire from your battery that's on your, your starter battery and run it to your your house battery that's going to be regulated because your alternator senses the voltage of the battery and adjusts how much power it puts into it but a, a lighter cigarette lighter outlet is just going to be unregulated power basically so that being said uh, and this has caused me to do a little more research having these comments which is a good thing since I am using a lead acid battery there's that issue of gassing and the battery putting off toxic gas to my understanding when you charge a battery the uh, the battery can gas and it's hydrogen oxygen and in some cases if you're charging at extremely high voltages like say in the 15 volt range like an equalization mode from a solar charge controller or something like that you can have uh, sulfuric acid in the gassing also my understanding is if you're charging at that high of a level and you're experiencing potential for sulfuric acid you can actually smell that 
I, I don't know. I mean, I haven't experienced it or tested it. <clears throat> I'm just going by our, uh, off of articles that I've read. Now, one thing that I did read, and this is taken from a website that's called Rolls Batteries, technical support section. I don't, I don't know. I guess Rolls Battery is a common battery probably used in industrial use in uh, like maybe forklifts or something like that large 2,000 pound lead acid batteries but they say it on this uh, technical support section I'm just gonna read this sentence to you <clears throat> it says controlling the cell voltage gassing can be greatly reduced where venting can simply be to the atmosphere through a static vent or chimney usually this is sufficient for small systems and of course a small 100 amp hour 12 volt battery is considered to be a small system and what they mean by controlling the cell voltage that website or that article stated that 2.35 VPC which is volts per cell is the point at where gassing begins that voltage and up what that works out to for your just your standard 12 volt battery is 14.1 volts so as your charger gets to the 14.1 volt level or above you're creating gassing effect which you're you're creating hydrogen and oxygen that's coming from the charge process most batteries or solar charge controllers that I've I've dealt with float in the area of 13.6 to 13.2 volts which is below the gassing level and if it is gassing at that voltage it's minimal so my thoughts on this are let me show you this battery box real quick this is just an outside battery box that I'm using for this battery and this this is actually designed to be like on an open trailer or on the tongue of a camper trailer or something like that where it can vent just to the atmosphere it has two vents right here so any gas that comes off that battery goes up into this lid and it will come out these holes if I'm charging at 14.1 or above it's possible or highly likely that I'm gonna have hydrogen and oxygen coming out of these holes not pouring out of there but it's coming out of these holes and it's highly flammable so a spark could set that off and it could blow this lid right off of that battery box so I'm seriously considering not charging while I'm driving down the road because of this because this is a lead acid battery and it's it's off gassing if it's at that voltage or higher a car alternator is going to be around 14.5 volts which is going to be high enough to create a gassing effect now I guess I could run with my windows open and I'll have air circulating through here and diluting that gas to where it wouldn't be an issue if the weather permits that and I really need to charge while I'm driving down the road then that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna plug in that cord and I'm gonna roll those windows down and I'm gonna let it off gas but in the winter time or if it's rainy or you just don't want that wind noise going down the road that's definitely not gonna be um, it's not gonna be a convenient thing to do so these are just things to consider and restrictions that I'm placed upon myself by using this lead acid battery as opposed to buying an AGM and the reason I'm doing that is I have this lead acid battery all of my batteries are lead acid batteries I don't own any AGM batteries at the moment is the risk worth it I guess that's for you to make that decision for yourself but for me not that I have a a wish to cause harm to myself or blow my van up or blow up my battery box I I certainly don't have I don't have those desires I want to be safe and I want to do things correctly 
but uh, by limiting my charging and when I'm charging and how I'm charging and knowing what I know, just a basic understanding of how this works, I, I believe that I can run this battery, this lead acid battery in a safe manner. When I'm sitting at a campsite, and that's partially why I designed this battery box like I did, where it's completely independent of the van, it's not connected to anything. All I have to do when I'm camping out and I have my solar panel hooked up to it is just take it and set it outside the door on the ground. Or even just have both of these van doors and the back doors wide open so that I get plenty of air circulation through here to where I'm not creating a closed environment and a place where that gas can collect and potentially be ignited by turning on a light or something like that. When you turn on a light there's potential for a spark to occur and if you have a concentrated pocket of hydrogen gas boom it's gonna potentially explode. So I just wanted to I just wanted to make this video to kinda help some of you guys out and for my own knowledge too but uh, do some research and try to figure out you know what's important to you of course safety should be important to everybody I hope it is to me and um, know what you're dealing with and and the potential hazards and then deal with the restrictions if I was to just not have a battery at all and I'm thinking hey I need to get a battery for my van what should I buy Knowing what I know today, I would just buy an AGM battery and be done with it and not have to worry about those hazards and those, those problems. But in my case, I own, already own these batteries, or this particular battery, which happens to be a lead acid battery, so I'm going to have to follow specific situation, or uh, I don't know what the word is specific guidelines in order to operate with this battery inside my van safely. Oh, another thing to mention too, from my research and what I understand is a lead acid battery does not emit gases when when it's not being charged. So at nighttime when I put the battery back in the van or close up all the doors and I no longer have my solar panel out there and I'm not charging the battery, I'm just sleeping in here or using uh, lights or something like that and the refrigerator is running, it's pulling power from the battery and the battery is not um, is not off gassing. So I'm not concerned about it during the nighttime. it's only through those moments when I'm actually charging the battery that I have a hazard or, or a potential issue with off gassing and potential for fire and explosion and all that other good stuff so that's what I understand guys and again as always if you know more about this subject and you want to share it with everybody with myself and and everybody else put a comment down in the comment section and and uh, that's how we're learning and that's how we're getting better and safer about what we're doing with these vans and charging batteries and solar solar systems and solar systems solar panels and solar charging systems and so forth so anyway i hope this helps somebody out hope it uh, makes us a little bit safer and hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day we'll see you on the next one